I don't know how you feel, but this always seems to me like magic, instant magic. But the rest of the journey to final beauty is a slow progress from skill to skill in the great Wedgwood pottery near Stoke. A patient build-up of perfection, with ruthless rejection if they're not quite perfect at every stage. The survivors shout unfashionable virtues, craftsmanship and creative pride. Golly, think what it would be like if they built cars like that. Aren't they beautiful? The potter's art at its very highest. This is the one that takes my fancy. I wouldn't mind this, you know. When you've seen the loving care with which these things are made, you just couldn't, could you, bring yourself to smash it up? That was fun, but I need something bigger than vases to give me man-sized satisfaction and destruction's chief attraction, the guilty fascination of instant, irreversible finality. How old do you reckon it is? About 70. 70 years old? Well, I'm damned. We were boys together in the innocent days before the First World War, when women were invisible and whiskey was three and six a bottle. And now this is the end of the road. Here it comes, then. But hold on now. Just why did I enjoy that? And should I? Psychologists must have it taped. The urge to smash things, Dr. Storr, is a pretty deep-seated and widespread button. You know, infants do it, elephants do it, football hooligans do it. Now I'm doing it. Is it a healthy thing? I don't think you can call it healthy or unhealthy. Exactly. I think what's unhealthy is not to recognize that you have it. And you obviously do recognize you have it. I would think it... Uh, starts partly because human beings are in a sort of junior inferior position for so terribly long they take such a long time to grow up and it's very frustrating to have people over you all the time and that's one reason that i think everybody has an innate desire to smash things and then maybe start over again but then man is a very aggressive species perhaps one of the most aggressive species that's ever existed and i think one of our great problems is how to channel and handle our aggression. If you're smart like Frank Valori, smashing can be big business. If you were asked to knock down, say, Westminster Abbey, how would you feel about it? Oh, I'd love that. It would be a great honour. What, what notable jobs have you done? I know you've done the, the Doric Arch at Euston, didn't you? Yes, we've done um, the Doric Arch. We've how done did you the... feel when that went Com down? Well, I was very proud. Yes. No regrets at all? No. No. Well, if you're making money, uh, you don't have regrets, do you? Any other way? So often you have to destroy things before you can create anything new. I mean, the kid that knocks down the um, tower then starts building it up again, doesn't it? And I bet that uh, besides having very aggressive feelings yourself and wanting to smash things, you also like making things, don't you? Fortunately, mm. man can smash things symbolically as well as literally, can't he? There's much more fun doing it literally, you know. <laughs> the combination of a half brick and a plate glass window I find quite irresistible. Would, have you ever broken a plate glass window? No, never. I'll tell you something I wouldn't tell everybody. This is going to take some doing. You wouldn't believe how many inhibitions I'm beating down right now. If you enjoyed that crash, and you did, didn't you? You'd enjoy a night, and unbelievably any night will do, at the fashionable Little Easy. It's an old Greek custom, and they take it with them wherever they go, including here in London. Nobody knows for sure how it began. There's a theory that it was one way of proving you could pay not only for the food, but for the plates as well. 
But any Freudian psychiatrist worth his coat will give you other reasons which I'd better not go into in a family program. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Like me, with a Scottish Presbyterian Calvinistic background, this is going to take some explaining to St. Peter. I shall simply plead Greek wine in the hope that he ever had a bellyful himself. He'll understand. But you know, I'd better. <laughs> if I don't stop, though, they'll be taking me away in a plane van. No, this is different. This is not for laughs. This is something I've been waiting for, something I'll remember. This is the big job. 200 feet of it towering above the Thames. Just drop him in Just here. drop it down there, yeah. As far as it'll go. Let's push it down yeah. as far as it'll go. Yeah, that's it then. And this one here? That one will do, yeah. Uh-huh. A brick will... chimney would disintegrate as it fell, but this is reinforced no. concrete. When these jelly night charges blow out the base here, the giant will topple whole. Pack it in tight. Pack it in eh? as tight as you can get it, yeah. Hard down. It takes some planning a job like this, and because reinforced concrete chimneys are rare, nobody can be quite sure just how she'll go down. How sure you are it won't fall this way? Pretty sure. That's why I'm, that's why I'm this side. Could you run for it if the worst came to the worst? You made it. It'll hang. It'll <laughs> hang, and the, then it comes very slowly. It comes down slowly? Pretty slowly at first, yeah. You so can we tell have which a way chance. it's going, yeah. So when it gets to about 60 degrees, it'll start to rush. Well, here we go now. Let's hope. Have a light. OK. Let's go. stupid kind of way. This is sad, don't you think? It looks like a murdered creature. The giant brought low. I'm on the corpse now. You know, when that damn great thing started to tumble, I just couldn't laugh. I'm damned if anybody could laugh at a thing like that. Let's see what it's like to walk up its corpse. When it comes to a thing as big and permanent as this thrusting high into the sky, I don't mind telling you, I find instant irreversible finality a bit sobering. I could almost wish it back into the sky again. Just like... 